five must-read books in the science genre. The Varieties of Scientific Experience, A Personal View of the Search for God by Carl Sagan. I'm not exaggerating when I say that Carl Sagan and Richard Dawkins changed my life. I would have been completely lost without Dawkins and reading Carl Sagan's books was the most humbling experience for me. The questions what caused the Big Bang and who created the Supreme Entity are both infinite regression, though the later question is considered a blasphemy. So what I am going to say in the review of this book is blasphemy. Ignore if you disagree with my opinions. As simple as that. One thing I don't understand is how can there be agnostics? Either you have faith or you don't. I don't understand agnostics. I remember J. Krishnamurti's quote that if humans have beliefs, then why do they have the intellect for them? Anyway. So our toes, thumbs, eyes, everything is a result of evolution. So how can the deities that people worship look like us? How can a part of the world believe that Brahma is the creator of the world and the rest of the world has no clue about Brahma? Is it because we were not created by Brahma? Otherwise, he would have made himself known throughout the universe. Brahma didn't create us. The humans created Brahma and all of the other gods through their imagination. And as Dan Brown says, all gods will die off one by one as their relevance outlives our evolving intellect. There are more books on this topic of God and religion like God Delusion and Outgrowing God by Richard Dawkins. I'm too much in awe of Dawkins, but I'm still going to say it, that Dawkins comes off as very strong and adamant about convincing people about the non-existence of God. Sagan's style is more non-combative, and so this book may appeal to more people. I feel Carl Sagan's books should be a part of syllabus in schools. His books should be a part of the process of growing because they are that good and understanding the larger picture is one aspect of what they call growing up. I highly recommend this book to everyone. How and why did it begin? Is there an end to it? What exactly is space? Why is it there? Are there multiple universes? What is the purpose of life in the universe? It is all perplexing. I'm sure many of you think about these questions. These sorts of questions bother me many times. I'm not helping in any way to find the answers, but some are. Of course, I'm not talking about gurus and sadhus who say that they know it all. I'm talking about finding it scientifically. It may take many years to get the answers and probably not in our lifetime. A universe from nothing. Why there is something rather than nothing by Lawrence M. Cross is a must read book. Brilliant and easy to understand. Does it have answers to all of the questions that bother me? Of course not, but it shows that we are on a right track and it gives a summary of things that we know today. Why does the world exist? An existential detective story by Jim Holt. Human perception has two philosophical singularities, infinity and nothing. The question why is there a world rather than nothing at all remains the darkest and most enduring of all metaphysical mysteries. Jim Holt enters this fractious debate with his lively and deeply informed narrative that traces the latest efforts to grasp the origins of the universe. He leaves us with the question Stephen Hawking once asked but couldn't answer. Why does the universe go through all the bother of existing? The Trouble with Physics by Lee Smolin in this book, Lee Smolin argues, despite our best efforts, we know nothing more about physics than we knew in the 1970s. Why is physics suddenly in trouble? And what can we do about it? One of the major problems, according to Smolin, is string theory, an ambitious attempt to formulate a theory of everything that explains all the particles and forces of nature and how the universe came to be. With its exotic new particles and parallel universes, string theory has captured the public's imagination and seduced many physicists. But as Smolin reveals, there is a deep flaw in the theory. No part of it has been tested and no one knows how to test it. In fact, the theory appears to come in an infinite number of versions, meaning that no experiment will ever be able to prove it false. 
In this book, Smalling not only tells us who and what to watch for in the coming years, he offers novel solutions for seeking out and nurturing the best new talent, giving us a chance at long last of finding the next Einstein. Genome, the Autobiography of a Species in 23 Chapters by Matt Ridley. This book has a really great introduction to genetics. It is divided into 23 chapters representing the 23 different sets of chromosomes in the human body. The concepts are intricate, but Matt Ridley does a great job breaking things down into digestible portions. Each chapter takes one chromosome and selects from each a particular gene to describe with a much broader emphasis upon what this actually means for human individuality, culture and society. The book is effortlessly informative yet light enough to be enjoyable. I hope you like these recommendations. Happy reading!